This video will be one of many that I'm going to be doing uh, over some of the products that I'm going to install on my 2021 BMW R1250 GS Adventure. Uh, the one that I have particularly is the Rally version. Just recently purchased it and it's an amazing bike, but I feel like it can be a little bit better in regards to lighting and safety ergonomics. Uh, so I do have quite the list of items to install to it. Uh, but this first video, I just wanted to start kind of at the front, maybe work my way backwards uh, on the bike and uh, sticking with Denali items specifically. On this first video, we will be going over the Soundbomb Original Dual Tone Air Horn. Uh, so this is going to be one of the first items that I knew I wanted to put on the bike. And uh, there's a couple questions that I feel like I had before I learned about this and maybe a lot of you guys would or other people would. Uh, and I feel like I would like to try to answer those in this video. So what is the sound bomb? What is it? Well, first off, it is a ridiculously loud compressor-driven air horn. It features a compact design with a blacked-out housing, and it blends in extremely well on most motorcycles. It's not white, it's not chrome, it's just all black. So it's not going to stick out uh, as, uh, as much as other horns might, or maybe as you may worry, I would not worry about it at all. Uh, it does a good job of blending in. Uh, the clamp, uh, because there are two parts, there's a compressor and there's the trumpets. There's the two trumpets. It is a dual tone air horn. So the clamp that has been designed for this horn is extremely rugged. Uh, it was molded and it was designed to withstand high vibration environments. So definitely, you know, motorcycles, it's going to be great for, but it's also good for autos, trucks, cars. As long as you've got the room, you've got the space for it, it's good to go. So the next question, why would someone want it? I would say that you should add this to your bike, car, truck, whatever. If you find that the OEM horn does not get the attention of inattentive drivers, or I guess people who are actively trying to make your day worse. I believe the OEM horn on most motorcycles are pretty much useless. They simply cannot be heard over road noise, passengers, or the radio. Pick your distraction, there's a lot of them. While there are other air horns available or even cross compatible maybe with wiring harnesses, this horn is the most reliable in its class with an extremely small failure rate out of the box. Oh, and also Denali has a five year warranty, so. Take that information and do what you will with it. What's included? So pictured in this video is everything that you get besides the wrench and the, uh, the five millimeter hex bit that I have pictured. Uh, so you get the manual, you get the five pin relay, you get the bolt, a nylock nut, and the horn itself. Specifically, the bolt is an M8 by 16. Uh, it's not very long, but that is what you're gonna use to mount it. The nut is a nylock nut, like I mentioned before. It'll stay on and it will not come loose. The relay is a standard automotive 30 amp relay, 12 volts, uh, and that is required in certain situations that we'll go over later. That about wraps up what's included with the Soundbomb original dual tone air horn. So what else do I need? It needs a place to mount and it needs 20 amps of juice to function. Without those two things, it simply will not work. So then I like to go over mounts. Uh, so with mounts, there are a lot to choose from. There are over 30 Denali bike specific horn mounts available. Now these were specifically designed and purpose built. If there is not a bike specific mount for your bike, uh, I would definitely choose between the L mount, the flat mount or the crash bar mount. So on my installation for my 2021 R1250 GS Adventure, I did go with the bike specific mount. That's going to be HMT.07.10700. It's not just compatible with this specific year make model. There is a little bit of overlap. So it's also compatible with the 1200 GS from 2015 to 2018, the 1200 GS Adventure from 14 to 19, the new 1250 GS from 19 to 22, and the 1250 GSA from 19 to 22 as well. Now overall, even if your bike was mentioned, if it's a low suspension bike, it will not work. There, there basically is no bike specific mount compatible with a low suspension GS. There simply is not enough room with a low suspension model bike. As it is, even on the rally with a little bit higher suspension travel, increased ground clearance, 
there really is not a whole lot of wiggle room. It is a tight space that this fits into. And you'll see where that mounts as well uh, later on in the video. Now it's a really important note to say that some versions of the 1200GS liquid cooled and 1200GSA liquid cooled. Uh, so again, 2015 to 2018 for the 1200GS, 14 to 19 for the GSA, they're not gonna be compatible with this mount. So the way that you know this will work is if the fairing stay bolt on your bike is an M8 bolt that threads in from the throttle side into a welded nut on the clutch side. If your 1200 GS GSA has an M6 bolt from the clutch side into the welded nut on the throttle side, this mount will not work. So if that's your case, if you have an M6 bolt from the clutch side into the welded nut on the throttle side, this mount will not work and you would need HMT.07.10400. This mount is only going to be compatible if your bolt is an M8 bolt from the throttle side to the clutch side. So the next thing I wanna go over is wiring. So wiring is gonna be an important part of this because like I mentioned before, it does take 20 amps. There is no bike OEM wiring harness that can provide 20 amps of power. You need additional wiring. Now there's basically two routes that you can go. The easiest method to get this connected to your motorcycle would require you to wire it into a CAN smart controller. Wiring it to a CAN smart controller is the easiest method because it doesn't require any splicing, soldering, uh, any cutting, any tapping. You basically get the CAN smart, you get this horn. The wiring for the horn comes with a CAN smart. You plug it into the CAN smart circuit, the CAN smart comes pre programmed, ready for a horn. You mount it and you're off and running. If you don't have a CanSmart, Denali makes the Denali wiring harness for sound bomb horns. The part number is dnl.elc.10000. This requires a relay. The relay is included with the sound bomb original dual tone air horn and the sound bomb split. That relay is not included with the sound bomb mini. So if you get a sound bomb mini and you want that harness, you have to add the relay. Don't forget it, it won't work without it. So are there any accessories? For the cruiser crowd, there is a horn cover. Uh, the part number is dnl.sb.050, and it will match the appearance of most cruisers. It's got a gloss black ABS shell and chrome plated steel construction. It was specifically engineered for V-twin applications. So if you don't like the looks of this necessarily and you wanna put it on your cruiser, I would pick up that torn cover uh, and it will match the appearance. Uh, if you ever see any pictures of it, it looks very slick. Are there any alternatives? So I previously mentioned there is the sound bomb split and the sound bomb mini. The sound bomb split, I would recommend that if the space is tight, there is no confirmed bike specific mount uh, made for your bike. Um, or maybe if you're doing a little bit more of an untraditional installation, Maybe it's a custom bike, maybe it's an off-road bike, maybe it's a side-by-side, -side, uh, and, you, and you have tight quarters, tight spaces, and not enough room for the compact. Uh, I would say the split may be your best bet. So instead of the compressor and the trumpet clamped together in one big unit, they will be split because the compressor will be separate from the trumpet and it will be connected with a hose. So you can mount it wherever you want as long as that compressor is within 25 degrees of vertical. There's also the Sound Bomb Mini. Uh, it does have a lower uh, power requirement, five amps. Again, there really isn't very many OEM wiring harnesses that offer that much power. So sometimes you can get away with it and simply swap the OEM horn. Uh, most times you will have issues and you will have to add that separate wiring harness. You need to add the relay. It only comes with the compact or in this case, the original, or the sound bomb split. So what are some key specifications? Well, this is 120 decibels. It's four times louder than a standard air horn. You will get people's attention, whether you want it or not. If you honk this horn, everybody's gonna look. They may not see you, but they'll definitely hear you. The dimensions, 5.4 inches wide, 4.0 inches high, and 3.6 inches deep. 
That's 137 mil wide, 116 mil high, and 86 mil deep. And as I mentioned before, it is CAN bus compatible. You can wire it directly to the CAN Smart, and that is going to be using the included wiring that comes with the CAN Smart. So, which tools are required? So, this is going to be basically the tools that you're going to need to install this horn with this mount. Again, this mount is specific for a 2021 R1250 GS Adventure, and this horn is the Sound Bomb Original Dual Tone Air Horn. You will need a 13 millimeter socket and wrench. You will need a T40 Torx bit. That's gonna be used to remove the OEM fairing stay bolt so that you can replace it with the included longer bolt with the mount. To tighten that bolt, you will need an M5 Allen bit and that's going to allow the horn mount to attach to the bike. You will not reuse the OEM bolt. You'll have it extra. Are there any installation tips or perhaps things to avoid when you're installing this? You want to keep the compressor within 25 degrees of vertical. Do not mount it sideways. It must be mounted vertical to enjoy many years of function. With this specific mount, there's not really any way to mount it sideways. Their only way really to mount it is vertically because there is so little space in there. And the way that this mount is designed, it forces the horn to stay vertical, so that's great. If you're doing something custom or there's no bike specific mount, definitely keep that horn within 25 degrees of vertical. As with any purchase, make sure the part numbers match what you ordered. Make sure you're given the correct parts. As with any installation, again, make sure that you loose fit all of the components before you tighten them down. When the horn is mounted and you're running the connections, definitely channel the wiring along the frame, under the fuel tank, and even along any existing OEM harnesses. That's always a good idea. Specifically for horns, Denali makes a BMW adapter that is not required when the CAN Smart is used for installation or when you do not want to replace the OEM horn when using this separate horn harness. The BMW adapter is only used when you want to replace the OEM horn. You'll definitely want to confirm polarity on the horn or the horn will spin backwards and it will sound like a drunk duck. Well, it's funny sounding, it's not effective. You'll want to connect to the battery after all of the other connections are done and complete. You'll see that the horn mount includes a protective wrap with zip ties. That is for this specific mount because on some BMWs, the, the horn can actually touch the brake line and it can cause discoloration. Not really any damage, they're braided steel brake lines, but they can discolor it. If you're concerned about it, put that wrap on the brake line and zip tie it closed and that'll help prevent any discoloration that you may find. If you're going off road with crazy muddy conditions and you expect there to be a lot of debris that may be flung up under the bike, or maybe if you're putting the bike away for the winter, extended period of time without riding it. Uh, I would recommend putting a stocking over the trumpets uh, because that way you will prevent any debris from getting inside those trumpets. If anything gets inside of there, it's gonna decrease the life expectancy of this horn dramatically. So just make sure you keep it clean of uh, spider webs, uh, mud, dirt, rocks, anything that be, could be kicked up in there and that will help you enjoy a long life with this horn. So now let's take a look at installing the mount to the horn. So you're gonna see there's a channel and that channel is gonna have the head of the bolt uh, rested in there. You're gonna make sure it's flush and you're gonna put the mount on the horn. It's pretty simple. Now remember this bolt is included with the horn, not the mount. So you can see how the head of that bolt rests in there. There's a little bit of wiggle room. You're gonna definitely wanna use gravity to help you keep it in there. So on the mount, there's gonna be two arms. One's gonna be shorter, one's gonna be longer. One is 40 millimeters, the other is 45. The short arm of the mount must be mounted to the horn and the longer one will be mounted to the bike. So in this case, this arm is the shortest and that is the longer one. I'm just gonna use my finger to help show that. So again, 13 millimeter wrench. 
So you'll see there is some wiggle room inside of there. The head of that bolt is kind of locked. It won't rotate, uh, but you want to make sure that it's seated all the way forward when you tighten this down. So you can see how it looks. There is a very small space there. If this was flipped around, there would be a, a bigger gap. You don't want to have that. If you'd like, you can pop off this cover and rotate that. I think I'll do that. So there's the diaphragm. Gonna line that up. And it snaps back on. We're now ready to install it on the bike. All right, so this is really the best angle I can get uh, to show you right in the center of the picture is where that screw is that you need to remove. And again, that's gonna be the lower fairing stay bolt. It does require a T40 Torx. So go ahead and remove that bolt to get started. So I got my GoPro out so you could see a little bit easier. That is the mount attached to the bike. Now it's just a matter of tightening that screw. So I'm just gonna Tighten that down. I do have Loctite on that bolt. We're gonna make sure that it clears. The bike on the center stand, it's a little freaky. So this is with the horn mount and the bike wheel straight. So you can see the clearance. Now let's turn it full lock other way. Full lock left. There's good clearance. At least at that angle, with the bars full left, it does not touch. So that is with the bars dead center. Actually doesn't touch there. But still, I will put that wrap on it, just because uh, I have it. I wasn't really concerned, but I figured I had it, may as well put it on there. So I've got the sleeve on there, that lower nut, do have that torque down and I've got the nut tightened on the horn and the horn mount. I would recommend tightening that nut down before you put the horn up on the mount. But it's very difficult to get that nut tighter when it's on the bike. So I would just do it beforehand. Um, I would recommend putting that mount perpendicular on the horn itself. That will give you the best shot at having maximum clearance on the forks. And then again, when you tighten that up that lower nut down, the lower bolt down uh, on the bike, do make sure that the horn itself is pushed back as far as it'll go. So that'll give you plenty of clearance. So really the only thing left to do is hook up the harness from the CanSmart to the horn, uh, run that wire back, and uh, the next thing we'll do is take a look at the light mount.